Today's workshop is um, an introduction to Renshape. Renshape is this red, dark red stuff. It is a, uh, it was developed as a substitute for wood, like mahogany, uh, for the uh, tooling industry because they would put a giant plank of mahogany down and machine it to test it. They would, they would test out their programs on wood before they went and cut steel because wood was cheaper to do. They also used the wood for patterns for iron and uh, iron uh, casting and steel and things like that. Uh, but wood changes dimensions with the uh, uh, moisture in the air, so, and it cracks. So they wanted something more um, consistent. And so they came up with this. It's a urethane foam. They make it, uh, dozens of companies make it now, and they make it in lots of different weights. This is um, the weight of material that I'm used to working with. Uh, to build nice models, okay. Um, do you all remember when we made the blue foam models? And it was pretty easy to, to sand it and shape it. And every now and then you'd put a whoops and you get a fingernail mark in it. Um, that material, the blue foam, is great for concepts because you can do 10 models really fast. This takes longer. So this is an investment type of material, okay. You wouldn't use this material to do 10 pro concept models. You'd never get them done. Uh, but once you have selected one or two, you can move into wrench shape or a harder foam like this um, and invest uh, your time in the model because the model is going to be more durable. It, it might actually weigh close to what a production piece is going to uh, be like. It has uh, pretty good strength. You can paint it. You can make it look beautiful. And you can change it. If you cut off a corner that you really wish you didn't, you can glue on another piece and flatten it right out. All right, so what we're going to do, these are all yours. These are your torture blocks. I'm going to teach you how to do some basic stuff, very similar to what we did with the blue foam model, except you'll notice it takes a lot longer to work to, to get the material off. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is you're going to take your block, and you're going to flatten the bottom, because these are all cut uh, from a block where this dimension is the dimension of the block. So that's parallel. But the saw wasn't perfect, so yeah, it cut this way, it might have cut this way, it's, cut, it's a little wiggly. So what we do is we put sandpaper, this is very rough sandpaper, that's on the nice flat table, and we flatten it out. And you can flatten that out, you can see the light in the dark, okay, the light is the sanding marks, and the dark is where the valleys are. So you just sand it down until you get reasonably flat, it doesn't have to be um, perfectly flat, although at some point in the future you may decide that a model is worth doing to a pretty high level, and then uh, you can do that. This is flattening it out, mostly so that when you put it down flat, it doesn't bounce and rock all over the place, okay? And also as a reference surface, you're going to be using the bottom surface to, uh, as a reference point, to put measurements on the side. And if the bottom surface does this, your lines are going to do this, and you won't have a, a nice, fair line on the part. Okay. So I have done all this already, just like Julia Child. I've already prepared some things for you. Okay. This, I have already flattened the bottom. I cheated, and I used the factory edge, because one edge was nice. Um, and you'll notice it has a, a curve, a compound curve on the top. Okay. So after I flatten the bottom, and th these, this is the steps that you'll be doing, by the way. Okay. I marked a center line. Okay, that you can see all the way around. You remember that from the blue foam model. Mark, keep your center line so that you can take measurements off of it. Okay. And also, just for, uh, to make it pretty consistent with the model that we did before, we have marks on the end that are at different heights. Okay, 20 millimeter at one side, 25 at the other. Um, I, th I just chose these measurements randomly. They seem to work. And I picked a point um, on, the, on the high side of the center line for the peak. So it doesn't peak in the middle, it peaks over to one side. It peaks on the side with the, with the, where the mark is higher, okay? And you get a nice uh, smooth surface, okay? This is going to be step one. You're going to mark everything, okay? And then you're going to, you can use the, um, the coping saws to do a rough cut, okay? Leave yourself a couple of millimeters. And then you can sand it to the, to the, rest, of the uh, rest of the way down. You can use files. I encourage you to try all these different methods, okay? The, uh, this material at this stage really likes the rough, aggressive file, and we've got 
several of these here, so you can take turns if, if you're waiting for a file. Uh, come to me and I'll, well, I'll talk to you about something else. The rough file works very well. And for this top surface, you want it nice and smooth when you're done. So whatever you start with, you're going to wind up on the sanding block, making it uh, smooth and flat, okay? And then we're going to put our center line back in, okay? Then, once you have that, we're going to go to the top view and we're going to mark our profile. <coughs> we want a half round on one end and then corner radius is on the other. This is pretty much exactly like the blue foam model that we did a couple weeks ago, all right? The dimensions are different, but the concept is ex exactly the same. You're just going to do a half round on this side, corner radius on this side. And we're doing it in a different order than we did it the last time, okay? This time, you're going to do these radii before we go and contour the top surface, okay? I wanted to give you a chance to try the other way, and now you're going to try this way. It's going to be easier. We're also, we're, we're doing this profile from the side before we put the radii down. But, uh, and that's what we did backwards last time. We did it the other way around. So um, we have exhi exhibit number two here. Okay. Where am I on my list? Okay. So we mark the profile. How are we going to mark that profile? Well, geez, Andy, it's, every block's going to be different. So how are we supposed to make this work? Well, what I did was I took the block and I had the flexible ruler on one mark, on the, the center line mark, and on the back mark. And then I sort of held it like this, and I took a pencil, and I put a mark down there. And I looked at it, and I, made it, I did it a couple times to get it where I wanted. But I did it on cardboard, not on the wrench shape. Okay, so. Uh, I just put some rough dimensions on here that match. You can just trace it. We've got tons of cardboard up there. And um, once you get your basic dimensions, you can basically you're just making, you're just taking three points and connecting them with a flexible spline, okay? And help each other, other with, the, the, this is easier to do with somebody else. It's kind of hard to do by yourself. So help each other out. And each block is gonna be slightly different because they're all cut by hand. And then I took a pair of scissors and I cut this out. Okay, and the advantage here is that I can cut, I can mark it on both sides, okay, and it, it'll, it'll match, right? And then you go in and you cut that, okay? So let's see, what, do, what have we done here so far? We've marked our profile, we've cut it, and now it's perfect. And now we're going to mark our center line and the radius. Again, half round and then cor uh, the, uh, the corners, right? Keep our center line on, okay? And then we're going to move on to the tricky part. Most of you won't get to the tricky part uh, until you get and until uh, you pick it up later on. It's not going to be something you can probably finish today in class, but you should be able to get pretty far along on the second part, okay? So I'll do a little demo carving here. What we're going to do is we take when we're still in this phase, when we still have all our corners, we connect the corners with a ruler. So you get that mark, okay? And then once, we do that because the next step removes those corners and it's tough to, to sort of fake it and put those lines on, right? So then when we get to here, we have a line from the front to the back. We also have our nice uh, side profile and now, we're not going to use, you remember the, I had you use templates last time to get them all nice and consistent? We're going to forego that, and I'm just going to have you carve this in a way that you think looks good, okay? Flat, smooth, it's going to, they're all going to wind up looking the same if you do it right, or if you do it, uh, you know, if you take your time and, and do it right. If, and if you gouge too much out, that's all right. I remember last time, everybody took, a, a lot of people took a little bit too much off and we just had to keep creeping that line down. This stuff is hard enough to, to remove so that you probably won't blow right past it, okay? You'll sneak up on it. It's easier, okay? So this works pretty well with the, um, with the rasp. This is called a rasp, okay? And I've already got a lot of it off here. This is about 10 minutes worth of work, all right, to get to about here. And I'm bringing it close 
to the middle here, and I'm bringing it close to that, to that line, all right, with the rasp. This takes big, ugly bites, okay? And it also takes bites out of your finger, so be very careful, okay? Um, so when you get close to the edge, stop using this, okay? And switch over to this, because it, it's, it's finer, okay? And this is a dust mask exercise. I think we're all going to be making a little bit of dust, okay? <laughs> and what you'll begin to see is that even after hitting it with this really rough file, the stuff is really smooth. And you can take a little piece of sandpaper if you want just to see what, what it looks like. And it's almost ready for paint, all right? And, and that's, you know, this is a, a fairly rough instrument. And with a little bit of sandpaper and rough sandpaper at that, it gives you a nice, uh, a nice finish. That's why Ren Shape is very popular to build mo models in that are going to be painted because it's, uh, even if they're not going to be painted, you can sand it uh, with, uh, up to a, a pretty high finish and it can stand alone just this color. Okay. Okay, so I have a block for each of you. I have sandpaper. Where did I had a thing full of sandpaper? Ah, I missed it. All right, that's okay. Well, you get points for putting it away, but um, so. Hmm? Questions? Yes. Um, when would you use red shape over wood or wood? Um, it depends. Um, wood has benefits. If you need something that's long and thin and strong, wood has some advantages. Um, if you need something that has to really sparkle and shine and look great, or if you're going to machine it, or uh, do some sort of accurate um, machining, drilling, sawing, or something, or if you're going to glue up things to it, um, Ren Shape has an advantage over wood. Is Ren expensive? It is expensive, um, which is why, it, well, it, that sort of goes hand in hand with what you're going to do with it. You're not going to do it for concept models. But if you've got something that you're going to work on for several weeks, it's worth the investment to get the Ren Shape because the model is so much more durable and better and changeable than foam or, or other lightweight things. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? Does it change with temperature? Nowhere near as much as wood. Wood will change with humidity quite a bit. Um, and this, this does not shrink um, noticeably in the temperature range that you're likely to use. Yeah, it's waterproof. It, it might absorb a little bit of water, but not too much. But it, and it, doesn't change it won't change the size, no. Can you put it in the laser cutter? I don't think this is laser cutter uh, worthy. I think it would make a huge stinking mess. But um, for this exercise, I wouldn't try it. No, no. That, that's the fast way around. We're developing hand skills here, Manoj. Hand skills. Uh, yes? Uh, you mentioned you can't add materials back. Right. I'll get into that in a couple of weeks when, when we talk about body filler, Bondo, things like that. You can, uh, let's say you accidentally chopped off the edge of this and you want to, or you, you say, that's not big enough, I want it bigger. Well, you could cut a piece, glue it on, and then reshape it to the new size, okay? So, uh, you know, you, you, could, you could cut this straight here, glue another piece on, and then suddenly you have a workable larger piece that you can turn into your new shape, okay? And uh, as we'll learn when, I, when we do uh, Bondo, if you have a really rough surface and you want to smooth it out, or if you have uh, holes, let's say you had holes in there from mounting it somewhere and you wanted to fill the holes, we can fill them with a the body filler. I'll show, show you how to do all that, okay? And yes? How do we mark the radius? We can use the compass, okay? Since, it's a, uh, since we're doing a half round, it's, uh, it's just a matter of using your center line. And uh, this also shows you how accurate your center line is. If it's, if it's not accurate, you'll notice. Uh, you can bring the compass in so the pencil's on the line and get a, a good average of that and then mark it that way. And that's your uh, center point of your radius. And I can show you that again if you need to. Then you can put that in and mark your, uh, mark your half round. 
and uh, we have circle templates in the toolbox to do the, uh, the, the smaller one here. I just use the 30 millimeter circle. If you want to take a different, put a different size on, that's fine. Just let me know what it is. Any other questions? Yes? I might have missed it. Did you tell us where we could obtain the windshield? It's top secret. You can't have any. <laughs> uh, this stuff, one block that we I bought this <laughs> from, uh, <laughs> right, this, the, right, you will graduate with this block in your pocket. It'll be so small. Um, we buy this, uh, I bought a big chunk of it from uh, a company called Freeman. If you want more of this, there are sources online, you can Google Renshape, and you'll say, oh my god, it's how much? So if you need to buy Renshape for a project, pull your resources. If you know that three or four of you need it, buy a big chunk and then cut it down. Okay, but I can certainly help you find it. All right. Anybody else? Is everybody ready? I don't see smiles. I see like, oh my god, who is this jerk? <coughs> Why did I come here? Okay. Um, so, we have these nice blocks of Wren, and please take one and start up. Step one is easy. Flatten the bottom. And I would say get a dust mask if you don't have one.